Welcome to Resolve, the series where we sit down with small business owners to get the scoop on their game plan for success. And how they're gonna move forward in this new economy. I'm Adam. And I'm Annie. The niche that I really wanted to achieve and fill that I found was kind of missing at the time when we opened Iconic was there was a world that existed for just your traditional kind of quick cut barbershop and then you had your high end salon. But I found a lot of guys were looking for that in between, like they didn't need all the frills and bells and whistles of the salon, but they wanted something a little bit more than the barbershop was offering in that 10, 15 minute experience. So something right in the middle that was that salon-like experience experience, but a barber style cut. Just upscale barbering for the modern gentleman. Casey, thank you so much. I appreciate your time. I know as a busy business owner, even an hour is precious, especially now. I appreciate you guys. All right, so like I'd say, let's say March 16th, right? It was probably the official order on uh, yep. barbers and hair salons. So let's go back to that. March 16th, 2020, what's going through your mind when you wake up that morning? A lot of things. We had chosen voluntarily to shut down about three days before the official shutdown. We made a decision that all right, we gotta tell people we're canceling appointments and we're gonna be closed. And I'm thinking to myself, okay, I gotta figure out how to cover bills and stuff for two weeks and get everybody paid. And then all of a sudden the actual official, I guess mandated closure, you'll call it, came through. In one way you're sitting there like, okay, at least everybody's in the boat together, we'll, we'll get through this. And then the other boat you're like, well, nobody has any idea where this boat's going. And as a business owner, at least where I was at, my first fear is what am I doing for my staff? And what was your next move? The first thing I was focused on was how do I cover payroll for them? I could probably swing two weeks of payroll and then it's like, but then what? And when I talked to uh, my accountant, he actually put me in touch with an attorney and I called him and he goes, uh, listen, he goes, as long as you have them on payroll, which we do, of course, I'd get over to the unemployment site as soon as possible and get them applied for that because I think this is gonna be a crazy wave of that. And that was probably, in hindsight, the one of the best pieces of advice I got from anybody throughout it. They were able to get set up and approved and on the way like before that big wave hit. That's the scary part. When you don't think you have that, panic sets in. So once that was handled, it helped kind of ease us into, okay, we'll figure out what we're gonna do for the next however long for this shutdown. Casey, like many business owners, got creative to stay active within his community. For me, the one thing I really didn't wanna do was just ask for money. I wanted to figure out a way where we could maybe get more money than normal up front right now, but then pay it back in the long run. And so the best thing we could come up with was bulk gift certificates. So it was like, hey, buy a $500 gift card and get an additional 15% on top of that. Buy a $1,000 gift card and get an additional 20% on top of that. So a $1,000 gift card got you $1,200 worth of services. So yes, you were paying the money into the business up front, but you were actually in the long run gaining in some cases four or five extra haircuts out of it. It seems like they were excited at this prospect of being able to support you while you were closed. I can't say enough, and I tried to put out as many messages and texts to people as I could about how thankful we were and, and still are for the support we get shown on a daily basis. So I gotta ask, you guys were shut down. There was a period of time where people had to get their haircut. They're probably cutting it at home. Were you seeing people posting their, uh, their DIY haircuts on social media? Did that get to you, or were you able to take advantage of that? Oh, it was hilarious. I'd get pictures sent to me all the time. I actually started sending people, like, I made a tutorial video at my house on a mannequin on how to just like do like a survival haircut. Like how to just not screw up, basically. It wasn't like how to do a good haircut, it was just like how to not totally botch your husband's hair. And I was like, or your kid's hair. And I was sending it out to like, moms were texting me like, I gotta cut Johnny's hair, like what do I do? I'm like, well, to just keep it shorter, do this. It was like the most basic of basic videos. And I was just sending it out to people, I'm like, good luck, you know, send me the results. And I'd get pictures back, they're like, I don't think I did that bad. And you know, I had to be a little cordial and say, no, it looks good, but. I, I think they were. I think they were thankful to be back after uh, after quarantine, getting a professional haircut again. Our mission with Resolve is to look past the setbacks and towards the next level of success. Tell me about that opening day. What was that opening day like for you? June twenty second, twenty twenty. Things were still a little bit odd. Do you remember going back to school for the first day after every summer, and you'd have that like fresh outfit on, and you hadn't seen your friends in a while? and you were like kind of like anxiously nervous and you're like, oh, am I gonna like my teacher? And that, that, was, that was to a T the experience. So like when we came back to work, it was straight up, you're going to work, you're with people, you're still that close contact conversation experience. And I think it helped us be like, okay, like every single contact with someone isn't gonna hurt you or harm you. 
And that was really good for just like your mental state because you know, you coop yourself up long enough, it starts to like really wear on you and you, you start to feel weird around people. So coming back to it was as exciting as it was anxiety inducing and all in one. Yeah, one of the things I've been kind of looking at is it's like we've had goals and that was sort of like, everybody had goals. We had success and things we want to do. But I feel like stakes are now back in the picture, right? What's goals without stakes, right? So why do we do this? What's the end result? I feel like that's become more clear than ever. Oh, your why is, has to be everything you, behind what you do in life. And that's something you hear every motivational speaker in the world talk about. But I don't think anyone ever really takes the time to sit down and analyze it. And I think when you're forced to sit in your house for three months straight, almost four months, you really think about that why and you think about what makes you happy and what makes you tick and what makes you motivated and it can really change the trajectory of where you're trying to take things. Appreciate it and one of the things we like to do is uh, film you a little 15 second promo as a thanks for your time. You can throw it up on your social uh, and we'll also kind of tack it on the end of this episode. So awesome. if you're ready I think we'll put that together. Let's do it. And I just want to say it really seems like everything that you've been doing really shows how Iconic is a business that is a cut above the rest. Iconic to me is representative of something that everyone recognizes and remembers. It's like walking into your house with your family. It creates a good experience because when you come into the shop, you recognize and remember your barber and you have a good relationship with them. It's much bigger than just getting a haircut, it's an experience.